morning, guys. Can you hear me? Okay, good. We'll get started in about five, ten minutes. Just gonna check some gappers. Showed it some rad pre market. It's up uh, five days in a row, almost a triple. Uh, I'm probably gonna get stopped out of this first starter. I did 25,000 shares, I have 75,000 shares located, so this is about third size for me. Looks like I may get stopped out of this first starter, starter attempt. It's up three uh, dollars in pre-market, and yesterday it was up three dollars. So I think it's gonna have a two, three, four dollar down day eventually, and more on a swing uh, trade basis. But the question is, how high can it go first? Maybe it goes to twenty-five or thirty. I'm a little bit annoyed that I missed the entry on the first day. The funny thing is I was actually long here. Uh, I bought it when it reclaimed VWAP here midday, but then it slammed below VWAP and like it stopped out and I never got back in again. And the stock is all up almost, you know, 85% since. So it's a little bit annoying. I had two types of stop. I should have used like I don't know, maybe the lows of the day or the recent retracement lows as my stock. Slightly annoying. Yeah, I I very much hope that CL, uh, RAD is not as choppy as CLVS was. If CLVS, I, I took a $150,000 loss uh, or like two losses. I lost on this day and I lost on this day. And then, you know, I didn't have enough size on the way down. I had less size on the way down when it finally cracked and I, I never sized in large. And I just made back my losses and that's it. Overall, I, I was probably break even on this CLVS trade. I, I hope it doesn't happen on RAD. I, I want a clean trade. I don't want to lose 100,000 or 150,000 before I nail it. I, I just want a clean trade, but I rarely get a clean trade. Because I'm usually a little bit too eager on the front side. That's okay.
I'll get started in about five minutes. I just gotta finish up food. Get, let's get started. Uh, I'll start with my portfolio. This is my main portfolio, $402,000 unrealized. I haven't been over $400,000 thousand unrealized for since I think July or something so that's nice that means the market is probably near a short-term top um, and this is my secondary account also looking good like most things are working right now so there's not much to complain about And I, have, I also have a third account where I have this FCEL, which is up uh, Yeah, it's, it's up pretty much 100% from my entry before Christmas I have to watch this rad with one eye because it's very close, it's uh, stopping me out uh, SDRL is probably only thing not working this morning. It's gapping down from my. This is very similar to my AR trade and CHK trades. These were both. These were all beaten down oil gas names that had news. And SDRL was the same thing. They had news, and I bought it opening range highs and shot up 47% very quick, and now it's kind of 
fading back a little bit. Uh, but I'm using it a little bit below break even as my stop. And I've also sold, I think, about a quarter or maybe even a third. ITCI is a short any shaded yesterday. I don't think I'm going to add to this. I already have a lot of exposure to a lot of stuff, and I'm also going to take a big position in RAP today. Uh, but if I hadn't have um, had a lot of things on my plate, I would probably try to add to this thing. Uh, ENDP, I very close getting stopped out. It's been going sideways for two months. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm growing tired of it. MNK, I sold more than half yesterday as it closed below this 20 day moving average. And, uh, you know, it tried to break out of this range. It couldn't, you know, it's nowhere right now. It's very easy to rebuy it over this 390 or so. Called, like, what, a couple of days ago, like 70 bucks or so. Uh, high tide flag. I also tweeted this thing. Um, why can't this thing go to 90 or 100 in this market? <laughs> why not? Uh, MU straight up since entry. DXCM just been going sideways for about a month. SC just been going sideways since I bought it before Christmas. TDOC. Uh, CHK. You know, it looks good, I've just been raising my stops. I think this thing could go to mid ones very easily. But I'm just gonna trade my stops. Oh, Rad had a little bit of pullback candles, so now I don't have to watch it with one eye for now. Uh, AMD, it just, you know, I tightened up my stop quite a bit on it. It's pretty extended on the weekly chart. It's very vulnerable to a pullback, you know. Looks kind of similar to this, even though this move was over 200% and this is 50% or right? it depends on where you start measuring. Uh, but it, it looks vulnerable, I don't want to give back any profits. I have less than half size left, I have 20,000 shares, I think I have 8 or 9,000 shares left right now. 9,000 shares. Uh, BLDP, this has been annoying, like I, I owned it. I think I owned it here, got stopped out. I rebought it, uh, had a nice profit going, it pulled back, and I stopped that, got stopped out on this day here near the lows, or near, uh, you know, uh, not the lows of this day, but. Uh, and now I, but then I rebought it, I think I rebought it here, got stopped out here, and now I rebought it here, and well, I'm still in it. Um, so I have I'm at uh, yeah I've had three losses on it so far. Oh shit, the market's open. Okay, I was a little bit too slow with my positions. So now my full focus would be on rad. Stopped out of rat.
higher rat goes, the better. The higher it goes, the better. Shit, what I move. Oh shit, fuel cell. Gotta sell some more here. This fuel cell is in my smallest account and I'm up like... <laughs> I've increased my account by like a third. Thanks to this one trade.
Damn, no boss in rad. I want to add on pulps, but. A stop on one uh, F cell for a ha um, for half size. I have about half left from my entry at, in the mid 70 cent area. If it takes out opening range to lose, I'll sell half of what I have left. I've been selling some of these uh, tiny ones I bought yesterday, TTPH, which is up, you know, 30% from my entry late yesterday, and ASRT, same thing, up 20%. Okay. Sizing down a little bit. BLC, I missed the only one I did. haven't had nice follow through yet. These are just a quick, quick momentum, like froth trades, like a couple of day day trades. Either they go up, you know, 30, 50, 100 percent, or, or I just get out. <clears throat> yeah, looks like a bunch of stocks are looking to pull back today. Rad is now below VWAP, looking to take out opening range lows. I'm not gonna uh, short opening range lows. I have I've had two uh, ads now. Uh, I have about 65 cent average, not as high as I would have liked to, but uh, it's okay, I guess. The only way I will add now is. Uh, if I get a tight, tight entry, ideally it goes sideways here in the low, uh, like mid 20 area for a couple of hours and then takes another leg lower. That would be nice. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing goes back to 18 or 17 bucks over the next couple of sessions. Uh, 
let's see, fuel cell ticket stuff. What was the news? I know there's a PR on fuel cell. I don't know what the news was. It's probably totally irrelevant, it's just a pump momentum stock. chart uh, looking at the weekly chart this thing has room to there is some resistance at two bucks but if it takes up two bucks this thing could, <laughs> could go to four I don't think it will but I think two bucks is uh, you know reasonable target for this thing then it will be almost a 10 bagger from the lows a couple of months ago Alright, RAD is starting to bounce a little bit. We played VWAP so far. Where is VWAP? 2240-ish. Here it is, it's I have 40,000 rad right now, and I'm ready to short another 20 if I get a good setup. Okay, these uh, volatility instruments are starting to show some strength.
Alibaba is straight up from my entry. I can't believe how, how uh, <laughs> clean this move has been. Just up day on up day on up day. Rab is super strong again. I'm gonna start uh, stalking for a potential ad. So far it reclaimed Viva. And the volume is huge. The volume is probably gonna have a record volume day. Yeah, crazy volume. I'm going to trade up the 5 minute short now. I'm looking for a potential red 5 minute candle. AXSM as data, I think it, you know, 4Q this, you know, it's probably, you know, Monday or Tuesday. So it would be interesting. Hopefully, gaps up on the data to give up a good shorting opportunity. Tesla is going, looking like a reversal candle so far. Steam is also straight up over the past few months, could easily pull back 10%, 15%. <clears throat> some stops, it's ASRT, I'm gonna move the break even.
the five minute chart it retested VWAP again. Just sold all of my MU, just all of my MU, just to size down a little bit of exposure. So I don't really believe that much in that. give back a bunch of profits if the markets uh, are going to pull back here. The last thing I want to do is give back a bunch of profits. Baba, I'm going to keep the SDN, the I'll tighten up my stock. I just got stopped out of half of what I had left, so I only have quarter size left. And if it goes red on the day, which is 13, I'm gonna sell the rest. You know, I think we may have hit peak momentum, short term peak momentum. A lot of things are pulling back quite a bit. BLC and I'm gonna stop on it. start covering. I'm short 65,000 shares. So. Now let's see if we can get a two, three, four dollar move lower. I think another two dollars today is perfectly possible. Uh, and over a swing, you know, over the next two, three, four sessions, I think three, four dollars are possible, maybe even five. I'm going to raise my stop on ASRT a bit more.
whole TTPA is pulled back to my entry. Looks like it. EMDP, I'm very close getting stopped out of it, which is good because I'm tired of the position. It's going sideways for over two months. All right. Let's see here. The reason why I'm keeping BABA but selling uh, MU is because BABA is a growth stock and they're expecting you know, new highs in earnings over the next couple of years, next year, the year after. So this is the reason why I keep, I'm uh, kind of keeping with a white stock. So I think this thing would go to 250, 300 over, over next year. Well, MU is a cyclical stock, and even though they are expecting pretty decent uh, EPS growth over the next year, it's still less than it had earned in 2017 and 2019, but the stock is pretty much at the same levels. So I don't see a reason, fundamental reason for this MU to keep going up another 30 or 50 or 100 percent I just don't see a fundamental reason you know and like they're expected to earn uh, a little bit over five dollars next year while in 2018 they earned 12 dollars so it's less than half what they earned in 2018 so wh why should the stock go up to like 60 bucks or something uh, so that's the reason I don't really have a lot of confidence in this thing it had a very good short pattern when it broke out here and you know it was good for a relatively short term trade but here I, I just don't see much edge in it compared to BABA which is you know they're, they're, they, they're seeing record earnings for next year and also for 2021 forecasts are much higher than they were any of these years so I can see this thing go to 250-300 no problem All right, rad. I covered tiny, tiny, the 2220s. Like really tiny, a couple of thousand shares. Still have 63,000 shares. And I may add more. If I see a tight setup, I may add more shares. Most of my portfolio is red right now. TTPH, I think I'll set a stop on it because I don't want to turn this into a red trade. Absolutely don't want to turn this into a red trade. Make it. I should I should just sell it here. If it closes below 352, I'll, I'll uh, or let below 350, I'll just sell. It. I'm not gonna raise this stock. It should go this low. 
giving it a bit too much leeway. Oh, I almost got stopped out though. Oh, rat, nice. Uh, cover a few more. XSM is so far holding this rising moving average. This TCPH and FTSV are two very thin biotech names that are up, you know, like this one is up 600% over the past few months. TCPH is up 200%, or actually less than 200%. So. Yeah, FTSV is probably a, pe uh, a better, probably, short candidate. They had an offering at 35, right now the stock is at 43. You know, they had proof of concept data, that's why the stock ran up, I don't know. It's just too early in the development cycle, it's just not meaningful. So I'm thinking about doing a bunch of this thing for a swing short. Short is my FTSV. The way I see it, I'm risking less than $2 with slippage to possibly make. I mean, when the markets start pulling back, if they are ever going to pull back, uh, I mean, this FTSV could very easily go down to the sub 30 in, in, in days. You know, once these things start unwinding, you know. So I'm risking less than two dollars to potentially make ten plus. So I think it's a pretty good risk reward. We are seeing some weakness in the market. MDR is one I I I I, I missed. I had an alert set, it triggered here in that low 80 cent area. I had all the opportunity to buy it, all the way up to like 90 cents or so, and just didn't take the opportunity. Now it's up almost 60%. Man, if this thing goes to over two bucks, that's gonna hurt. That will hurt. I didn't get full size. I wanted 5,000 shares, but I didn't get it. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, rat! Awesome! Was this a misprint? Is that a real cat? Ok, 
Okay, I, I've covered 5,000 shares so far. So I have 60,000 shares left. Like, you know, let's go, fuck you. Let's get down, this thing down to like 17 bucks. Maybe not today, but I think it's gonna go down. No, this is not an intraday trade. I'm gonna swing it. I think it goes to 17. Like 17 bucks is the lows of yesterday, just to get a perspective on it. 17 bucks is the lows of yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna look for more entries. Um, I don't know if this candle is was real or if it's a misprint, but. Uh, yeah, if it can, re you know, yeah. Right now, I don't think it has any support until like low 90s. The 60 minute chart is completely empty. Five minute chart, there is some support in the high 20s, uh, but we'll see. On a good setup, I'll add another 20,000 to this thing. <clears throat> no way, F, T, S, B. Okay, I have just shy of 4,000 shares of this thing short uh, so far. Oh, I have to check if they have any data coming up. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good thing to do with... Uh, I use this site, Biotech, oh, sorry, Biofarm Catalyst slash calendar slash FDA calendar. Let's see, FD, as we know... Uh, Okay, yeah. So no data set for set no data set uh, uh, whatever. Uh, AXSM. This is the one I I really want to short, uh, but they have phase three data due uh, due for Q twenty nineteen. That's the next. That's either tonight or Monday or Tuesday. And then they have more data coming first quarter. You know that could be any. You know that could be as early as of January the second. And same thing here. So they have a lot of, you know, phase three data coming out. Ideal scenario if this re they release this data set like, you know, Monday or Tuesday or something, and they get and the stock gaps up, uh, you know, big. That would be an ideal scenario. Or if it, you know, kind of at least doesn't gap down. Because this thing is up, I think over a thousand percent. Yeah, over a thousand percent this year. It's absolutely crazy. So many biotech stocks up a thousand percent this year. Five hundred percent plus, at least. INSG. Hmm. Will I add to this thing? It looks good on the 60 minute. This is a 5G related stock. Okay, so fuel cell it stopped out of, stopped me out uh, on some shares, and now it looks like it reclaimed Viva for now. I'm thinking about buying this Twix if it takes out the highs of the day. I'm thinking about buying some. I'm gonna risk like 50 cents, and if this thing gets going, it could easily go up 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Another 5,000 shares here. I 
I don't think it's you know I, I think it could go I don't think it's gonna go red on the day but it could I think it could easily go to like low 20s at least right now it's in a five minute support area would be I I would love to see a bounce back to low 22s or something Okay, TTPH, I got stopped out. Overall, it was a break even trade. It didn't go as I hoped it would. Yeah, I know. I, I, I shot it up for a couple of minutes. Well, Rad has been good so far. I went from a $30,000 loss to a $70,000 uh, profit on it. That's a pretty decent swing. Oh, ASRT is showing some good strength. I put out some more sell orders on it. Tesla. So the question on Tesla is, is this a start of a pullback or not? Because it could be a good short like swing entry right here as it is bouncing with like a, I don't know, four, five dollar stop to potentially make, you know, 30, 40 dollars on the downside. Uh, the problem is it's not a big percentage move. I don't see much more than maybe a 10% pullback on it. Hmm. I don't know. the news on XRF yesterday.
I have 10,000 shares of this thing. I really want to buy another 10,000, but there's just not enough volume in it for it. Volume doesn't support it. IPCI, I covered about a third so far, or almost a third. Too bad I didn't have more size. There was even an opportunity to short it on opening range lows today, but all my focus was on RAD. Rightly so, rightly so. And this IPCI too, I think it goes back to sub 30. I have full size of FTSV now, 43.20 average. Very thin stock, but I think it's a good risk to work. ELDT very close getting stopped out, and that's for the best. It's just not going anywhere. Yep, okay, I got stopped out of it. Very good. I've been in this thing since I think mid October, early mid October. Just never got going. I was up about, or actually, I was up about 40% at one point, so I can't complain, but yeah, I, I really thought this thing could go to 7 8 bucks. Weekly chart, there's a lot of overhead on it. On the daily chart, it looks good. But yeah, it could break this declining 200 day moving average. So I am out. This HDHD looks great. I still have like, uh, I think about 80% of my shares from low 37s. Look at the weekly chart. I mean from low 37s. I mean from about this area here. And, you know, you can just clearly see the pattern. You know, I anticipate, I anticipated uh, a break here. Uh, but so far, so good. Why can't this thing go to 50 plus? It has good earnings, good estimates for next year. Record, record earnings. You're gonna make, uh, earn record, record amount of money next year, so. Why wouldn't this stock go to record highs? SC is holding up pretty well. It's now it never got going, but it's just it's not going down either. So, but I think if it takes out this 39.50, it's gonna go to. 45 plus with the earnings it has or it actually it doesn't have earnings but the revenue growth they have accelerating revenue growth which is amazing for the amount of numbers they're putting up Alibaba is near the highs of the day they, they tried to have a red day on the stock and nope this thing can't have a red day I'm up over 20% on it now, which 
just you know <laughs> you know I've been talking about this thing for so many times but you know you can just clearly see this is exactly like what I'm looking for in HD HD it's the same pattern just the same pattern you know this is an institutional accumulation over many years had a big move went sideways pulled back you know been building higher lows for a year and you know, break out good earnings estimate this is what you're looking for and there are other ones looking like this too, or similar, like Mo, Mo, oh, well, this is not as good, but JD is another one. Okay, this isn't as good either. Uh, but Tencent is one. Tencent, I missed the entry on it, but, you know, just before Christmas, this thing broke out of this range. And, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to 60 plus next year. Amazon is another one. This one actually broke out yesterday. I was thinking about buying it, but you, know, you can clearly see, you know, higher lows all the way. You can clearly see this pattern. Twenty-five hundred next year. Why not? Yep, this thing broke out yesterday. But it's a kind of slow mover, so I passed on it. There are faster moving stocks in the market. This BE is getting pumped uh, together with plug, BLD, B and F cell. So I'm just, I have an alert on it. You know, if this thing gets going, it goes to 10 bucks. I don't want to miss that. CLVS is kind of trying to break below this trend line. CLVS and ARWR are very similar shards. Both have big moves, put in some tight triangles on the 60 minute chart, and uh, they're just in these channels right now. Okay, let's do a scan here. back in gold. I can't believe I missed it. I've been talking about this gold trade for months. Since I started streaming, I've been talking about this potential flag break and I missed it. Or I didn't miss it, but I just passed on the trade because I had so much exposure already. <laughs> Look at how great it looks on the weekly chart. So good. It looks so good, man. could have bought it sub 30 and then there was another opportunity on this uh, uh, yesterday to buy doping range highs in the mid 30s but I passed on it twice can't believe it can't believe it Yeah, I'm gonna cut the stream. Um, so let's see. F cell is still holding up. The volume is great. Already over 40 million shares traded, which is way more than yesterday. So I don't necessarily think it's gonna pull back. Uh, you know, with this kind of volume, why can't it go to two dollars? Rad is trying to bounce. Uh, let's see. 
near VWAP, it may offer a potential ad spot. SDN is, I mean, look at this this higher lows channel on the on the weekly chart. Kinda looks like he wants to go higher. It does definitely have the earnings power. Very good estimates on this stock. Kodak or Kodiak um, looking good. Bounced off this 60 minute support line. Alibaba near today's highs already. Near today's gap of highs. This thing. Look at the 60 minute chart. This is amazing. Look at this thing. <laughs> if all stocks could look like that after you buy them, right? This is amazing. This is this is when institutions really want to get in. This is when you get charts like this. What's my entry? I think my entry is in the low 180s or yeah, one low 180s somewhere there. Yeah, about 20%. Very good. And I think this thing is has a lot more upside. LK, this one I also think has a lot more upside. This thing has to be with the highest uh, revenue growth in the whole market right now. 517% last quarter. SC has pretty high too, 198%. But this LK, I, I can't think of any other stock that grows revenues as fast as, 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 fast as this one does. Nothing comes close. Like SC has a super revenue growth, but it's less than half of uh, LKs, which is just amazing. Yeah, well, this is bull market trading. You pick your spots and then you just wait. Cut your losers fast and let your winners run because. You know, bull run can last for longer than anyone thinks it's possible. That's why it's so important to trade your stops and not try to anticipate some kind of a top or whatever. Uh, all right, that's it for me today. I don't really plan to do much else except for rad. I do plan on maybe adding a little bit more shares on RAD, but we'll see about it. It bounced perfectly off this five minute moving average. And I'm telling you guys, technical analysis is great. Technical analysis works great, all I have to say. Mm. All right, that's it for me today. Thanks for joining, and I will see you on Monday. The last two sessions of the year. I hope you all had a great Christmas, and I hope you have a great trading day. And a great weekend, and I'll see you Monday.